Hello friends. I got a package. This is a package for a gentleman called Vault 60 Overseer. I guess he has a brand that he's trying to develop is around that word. It's, he says it gets some power now but it cannot get to read write. And then he has no power to the other external drive or a GoTech. So I guess he's saying that that when he plugs another drive into the back of this um, there's no power. So he, he, yeah, I remember him saying something about it probably being power related. So um, anyway, let's uh, let's get our tools out and everything ready, and uh, let's let's just take this thing apart. Said is that he's got no power on the outside connector. Boy, wouldn't it have been easy if the power issue was the only problem we were having? That filter capacitor on the floppy, and then you know, maybe something here, maybe a capacitor that w would have been on here that was messed up, but completely dead uh, when you plug an external drive like a GoTech or anything else really. So I had this external GoTech that I plugged in there and it is dead too. And so I decided to, uh, you know, take this board out and examine it. And it's kind of interesting. I don't, I kind of did some searches on the internet um, before I figured this out and nobody mentioned anything about it, uh, you know. Um, but this external connector has no power on it. There's supposed to be 5 volts and 12 volts, plus 12 volts, coming to, to a, you know, to a drive connector, a DB23. To, to power the external device and on this connector there is none. It's these two pins on the end here and when I do a continuity test between uh, this is the this is the uh, uh, power cable to the internal drive right here this power connector and this 12 volts on top here and 5 volts down here and neither of these have any connection down here and I can't find anything that has a connection down here and we see no traces on this side and there's a connector covering it but I think I would see some traces over here I tested these two pads here those are on signal pins I and I just and I see these signal pins and I see a ground here uh, and a ground over here but I don't see any any power going to these pins so uh, this drive is seems like it's designed to not pass power through to the uh, to the other computer I mean to the other floppy it's a bit strange isn't it so I have an I you know I have an idea um, a GoTech uses a lot less electricity a lot less current I should say than a, a, a regular floppy drive because it's not trying to spin track and and uh, and disk motors. Um, so I bet it's not a problem to daisy chain a GoTech off of a 1010. So what should we do? Should we bodge some wires, power wires across and uh, and give it a go? I think my, uh, well I mean if this drive doesn't work anyway what's the point, right? So I think what uh, I mean, you're either going to find a, another 1010 drive, internal 1010 drive, or you're going to grab another floppy out of another Amiga and adapt it to fit in here, which I have, people have done before. Or I already have a GoTech made for the Amiga 1000, a GoTech mount. I should have, I think I've already published the video about that. Check my channel for it. Uh, this would fit right in here because I designed it for the Amiga 1000 and of course this is exactly the same, you know, other than the fact that there's there's not a bunch of uh, mounts here that go on top of the joystick and, and mouse ports on the side, but other than that, like the inside of this is probably identical. So I think, as it, I definitely I wanted to find out if this fits into a 1010 because I, I needed to confirm that 
before I could tell people on Thingiverse that this works with both. Um, so I'm going to try that and uh, I guess I'm going to jump power across. I'm just going to verify which of the 5 and 12 volt rails. I'm going to verify which ones they are just to make sure I don't get them mixed up and blow my GoTech um, and po potentially something else. So anyway, yeah, let's, uh, this would make a good video, how to activate power on the external port of your 1010 if it doesn't have power. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to turn on the Amiga and make, verify which is 12 and 5, and then I'm going to make 100% sure that I know which one of these two pins on the end is 12 and which one's 5. I think the 5 is on the top. Anyway, let me, uh, let me put that bodge wire in and see how we do. Okay, here's our end result. There was a nice uh, via here for me to solder 5 volts to. So I did that. And uh, I mean, I'm using thick wire because this is, you know, this is power, the power rail. A little bit thicker than I needed to, but it's just what I had on available. Actually, it's more about the ins this insulation is actually extra thick. But yeah, I did a little squiggly to get us between the uh, screw posts, uh, if we're leaving it, that is. Um, so I think what I want to do before I do anything else is I want to test the, just to make sure I don't have something messed up. <clears throat> so the best way to do that is, you know, to make sure that I didn't find the wrong diagram. Boy, you have to really be careful about that. If you Google, see, I have put this in one of my other videos. If you Google CD32 power pinout, the first hit on there is wrong. And you'll blow your CD32. Yay! Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test pin 12 on this connector back here. Make sure we're not shorted or anything. All right, so we're on volts, and we're just going to see. We should have five volts. Yeah, five volts. All right, so that is definitely the five volt rail, and uh, and so that's the the top one, and the bottom one is supposed to be. Oof. It's supposed to be twelve. can't really see what I'm doing here. Okay, this should be 12. It's actually coming up at 13, okay. Um, so what these are is these are the... Ooh, these are the... Uh, <clears throat> the 12 is here on the top. I'm sorry, the 5 is up here on the top. Focus. The 5 volt is up here on the top and the 12 volts down here. So now I'm just going to plug just this in without a drive or anything and make the exact same tests. All right, moment of truth. All right, so we're good here. All right, so oh, let me uh, see if I can get both of these in the shot. This is too far away. You can't see it. So we just need a ground. I guess we'll just do the same thing. We'll go to the chassis. And just carefully do this with the power on. We have five on top. And 13 on the bottom. So we've matched what's going on on the back of our Amiga. So we know that's going to work. Now let's add some floppy drives into the mix. One's here. Okay.
into the 1010 chassis. See, this is the type of thing you have to worry about. This power cord might not be long enough. Fortunately, I've got extras. Okay. And we need a thumb drive, probably, I guess. Uh, do I have another one around here? I do, don't I? Yeah. This is the one. I don't know what's in any of these it's selected in these thumb drives, but are we okay there? It's kind of flimsy. Let's try it. Alright, so we got yeah, we got flash floppy. It looks like in this one we have a workbench 1.3 disc selected. Do I have anything else on here? No. Amiga test kit. I'm probably going to need to put something else on this because I, I can't load Workbench 1.3 in two drives, you know. And uh, that's what I want to load off of the main drive. I guess I could take this and put it over there. Yeah, and take that one and put it over here. That's probably what I'll do. Um, <clears throat> but that's two drives that are technically powered up. Let's try three. Moment of Truth. This is another GoTech I have. <clears throat> I guess I could zoom in. And... This is another GoTech I had. I made a bracket for uh, Amiga 2000. Wasn't super pleased with the result. Okay, yeah, now we have three at least powered up. This is DFO, DF1, DF2. And I'm just making sure that I load Workbench off of that and then just have two other DOS discs in here so that they show up on the desktop <clears throat> when, we, when we finish loading Workbench. Okay, so let's see. All right, Workbench 1.3, Brad, and yeah, Fairy Tale Adventure. Okay. Good. Let's see what happens. Well, we at least took care of one of my friend's issues with this drive. And if he if he buys this GoTech from me, I'll just leave it in there and I'll, I mean, I'll send him a fully functional drive. It'll have a GoTech in it instead of a floppy. Here we go. Here's Brad's empty, which is not empty. It has some files in it. Whether they show up here on the desktop is another. Oh, yeah, there they are. Okay, and then uh, Fairy Tale Adventure. Perfect. Mission accomplished. At least we got my friend's um, external port hot, and from there he can go and do his tests. He's he's done quite a lot of tests himself. He's he's a uh, he's not uh, a complete noob about that kind of thing. So <clears throat> he knows the the diagnosis process of switching parts and all this kind of thing. So let me reassemble everything and see how this GoTech will work if it's going to, it should work the same, but we'll find out, you know, as far as fitting into a 1010 case. So here's our proof of concept on our, uh, and proof that the Amiga um, 1010 drive is pretty much, uh, form factor wise, is identical to the, uh, the Amiga 1000. They look the same, and it looks like they, a lot of the things came from the same mold, you know. Or the same uh, CAD file of the same mold, you know. So anyway, I think that's going to do it. Um, the guy's going to decide whether he wants to buy the GoTech from me. Um, I need to send him a picture of this, probably. Uh, and um, 
and uh, we'll go from there. Otherwise, we're pretty much done with this project. So uh, thank you for watching, friends, and we'll see you on the next one.